Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Welcome into Culture Keys today. I'm going to get right into this. Last week we started a thought concerning leadership attitude. All of us know those people who are super gifted, but their attitudes disqualify them from upper level leadership. It's important that we talk a lot, um, that we engage this idea of leadership attitude, because I think that attitude is fundamental to the success and the failure of people, of organizations, um, and of the people who are, who are led by those people and organizations. Attitude is important and an attitude is the is a way of of thinking that impacts your behavior it's an inward feeling that's expressed by an outward behavior and it doesn't always need words in fact is if you have children you'll know that their body language can say almost sometimes a whole lot more uh, than their mouths do but when their attitudes are good it's amazing and when their attitudes are bad then it really impacts the whole family. It's amazing how a good attitude impacts everything in your circumference. Everything connected to you is impacted by a great attitude, full of energy, full of positivity, full of faith and hope. And good attitudes have all of that character wrapped up inside it. I want to start today just with some principles. And I want you to write some of these things down. And these are going to be broad strokes, and then hopefully as we narrow in, we'll get into some narrower strokes. Um, But this is a broad stroke principle, and it's this. Your attitude will determine your approach to life and the leadership. So it really colors everything in your life, your attitude. And the question you got to ask yourself is, what is your natural attitude? Uh, thought process. Are you naturally positive or are you naturally negative in your thinking? Do you come up with more reasons why a thing can't happen than you have for reasons why it will? What is your natural positivity or negativity? How do you respond to difficulty and setbacks? Because boy, bad attitudes surface during difficult times first and most. Um, it, it, you can really see it when things do not go well. I think everybody can put a smile on their face and get along while things are going in their favor. But the minute that turns, uh, how do you respond to difficulty and to setbacks? And your attitude will ultimately determine how you deal with the most difficult times in your life. And when your general approach to life and all that life brings is positive in nature, it will bring continuous positive results. Let me just shout this to you that are walking through difficulty today that the, the, the situation of your life is a real trial, whether it's financial, physical, relational, spiritual, mental, whatever realm that difficulty is, you, you, you're walking through it right now. Um, what, is, what is your attitude during those times? Um, is it positive or negative? Do you, do you keep thinking of ways it's going to fail and outcomes that are going to be painful? Or in your mind, are you filled with ways it's going to work? Um, I think all of us have a natural proclivity having to do with our worldview that affects our attitude and our posture toward life in general. If you're one of those people people that thinks life owes you something and you are walking around with a chip on your shoulder, you have an attitude problem that will prohibit you from, in my opinion, a lot of upper level high capacity leadership opportunities because a bad uh, attitude is like leaven. It will absolutely jump on, multiply and grow in the lives of others if the leader has a bad attitude. Your attitude will determine your approach to life and leadership. Secondly, your attitude is the most contagious of your gifts. Always remember this, the most contagious gift you have is your attitude. Your attitude is what people will catch the most. You can be educated, you can be experienced, and still yet, it's your attitude 
that will impact your team, the people that you lead or the organization you lead in the most. We have to strive. Watch this. I, I want you to write this down. I want to strive for my attitude to exceed my gifts. I want my attitude, the strength of my attitude to exceed the strength of my gifts. And you know what? You may say, well, pastor, that wouldn't be hard because I'm not terribly gifted. Well, can I tell you, you can make up for a lot of ungiftedness with an absolutely stellar attitude. I know a lot of people that aren't very gifted, but their leadership impact is immense. You don't want to know why? Because their attitude impacts everybody at the table. They have a we can do it, I can do it, and you can do it attitude. I can do it, you can do it, we can do it, right? They have a it's going to work, it's going to go over. And to be honest with you, man, I, I just believe that people that are in Christ all should have this kind of attitude. It's going to work. It's going to happen. And if I'll work like it's up to me and pray like it's up to God, it will absolutely come to pass. But your attitude is the most contagious of your gifts. So just know that your bad attitude gets on people and it multiplies. Uh, I was allergic my whole life to poison ivy. And every year I would get it at least once and most of the time two or three times. And when I got it, let me tell you, it looked like uh, you can't believe the way my neck and face would swell and other body parts uh, if I even got close to it. And let me just tell you, your attitude is that contagious. If I got in the neighborhood of a poison ivy plant, I ended up with poison ivy. And I'll promise you this, if you've got someone in your organization or you that operates in a bad attitude, I promise you that will be the attitude that spreads and it will spread uh, like a contagion. Everybody close will ultimately get it. And thirdly, it's our attitude that strongly shapes our relationship with others. And I believe this and I teach this, that relationship is the currency of ministry. It's the bartering system that leaders have to move the hearts and hands of followers into action. I know this, when I make great deposits in the life of others, I can also make great withdrawals from those same lives. Relationship is, to me, uh, one of those core aptitudes, our ability to relate to other people, uh, our ability to open our hearts to relationship, to open our hearts to learning because we believe that everybody God sends our way has something, uh, has something to teach us. But your attitude will shape your relationships. It will determine, determine your attitude will determine what you see in others. What do you see when you look at other people? Man, when you have an incredible attitude, I'll promise you, you'll find the best and you'll begin to mine that best out of their life. And that's the question you need to ask. Do you naturally see the best or do you naturally see the worst in people? You see what you expect to see. You find what you're looking for. Um, so if you're looking for it, then you'll find it. But if you're looking for the blessing and the best and the good stuff, then that's what you will see. You know, a bad attitude can often color the way you see the people around you one way or another. It'll give you biases that shouldn't be there in your leadership. Uh, it'll cause you to overlook people that may be uh, a very big gift that God is sending both to you and to your organization. We can't allow a bad attitude, a bad outlook, a bad worldview to impact the relationships that God has called us to. Relationships, what helps us mine the very best out of the life of other people. It opens the door for teaching to happen on both ends. Uh, I pastor a great group of people here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for the impact that we've had so far, and I'm more thankful for the impact I believe that we're about to have. But I know this, without relationship. Uh, I'd have a very difficult time leading people in the fashion God's called me to lead them. And if I don't have a great attitude so that I see the best in people, um, I'll never develop the relationships God wants me to have so that I can mine out those gifts and abilities that he has sent our ministry to cause the body to be whole and healthy and one. 
How do you see others? Because your attitude is strongly going to shape your relationship. And then let's do one more before we get off today. Attitudes impact outcomes. When you're assigned a project or you're asked to do almost anything, your immediate internal response has a significant influence on the speed or quality or creativity or the level of joy you experience throughout the process. And let me go back to that immediate eternal response. When you're asked to do something, when the door of opportunity or invitation is open to you, what's your immediate internal response? And I listen, I can tell I've got people at the table that when you ask them to do something, it's the, uh, that's immediately, uh, I got so much or, uh, that's not really what I'm called to or, uh, I don't want to do that. Or, uh, the people that are involved in that aren't my favorite. You can always tell where their attitude is. And that initial attitude is going to impact the outcome. Your attitude are the sales that catch the positive or the negative winds. And you have to choose to live in the positive possibilities. Amen. You got to choose to live in the positive possibility because your attitude is going to impact your outcomes. We have to choose to live in the positive because believing it will work, believing it'll happen is the first step towards making it work and making it happen. On the other end, if you believe it'll fail, that's your first step towards failure. If you don't believe it's going to work, you don't believe you're enough, uh, all of these will contribute to a failure much more than it will a success. I've enjoyed having some time with you this morning on Culture Keys. I'll take it up right here next week. 